Hello YouTube, Redneck Reloader here. Um, today I want to make a little uh, product review video, I guess uh, you would call it, of the uh, Lee Quick Trim, and this is the Deluxe Quick Trim. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this trims your uh, cases, it says no measuring, uh, you can adjust the trim length, and it works on... 0.17 to 0 0.50 caliber and then you order your trim dies for the cartridges um, I, ne I needed something to start trimming cases because I started loading uh, 223 rather than just pistol and I had to trim my cases so I decided to go with this I like the concept of this I I, I work everything around my reloading press so I, I prime on my press um, I've got a bullet puller that mounts my press, and I like the idea of having a trimmer that mounted to my press rather than a whole s separate um, standalone product. So that's why I went with this. Um, it, I, I've had mixed results with it. I'm not absolutely thrilled with it, but it does do the job. Um, but I just want to do a little review of it and um, tell you some little tips and tricks and actually one I just learned this morning with it but um, this is what the device looks like uh, it comes with this little uh, they call it a shaving catcher or I thought like a chip catcher I think they call it it's stuck in the box there it's just a little piece of plastic that you can mount on your ram and it's supposed to uh, catch chips uh, just leave it in the box it does absolutely nothing it's just an absolute waste of time um, but this is the trimmer itself, and it's a, just a standard trimmer that works with a lot of different caliper, cal calibers. And then it, you buy a die which is specific for your cal caliber, and this is a 223 die. And, you know, the idea is that this goes inside, and then you rotate it, and I'm not pushing on it. You're not supposed to... Put force on it when there's not a case in there because it can mess the blades up but um, and you just mount it on top of your press you rotate this and the die length is set where it trims it to the correct length there is an adjustment it's this little black ring and it clicks it's got 10 clicks and it's supposed each click is supposed to be 1000 the idea behind that is you can just uh, adjust uh, for the stack up tolerances where it might vary just a little here or there so you can kind of fine tune your trim length but uh, uh, there is a ring this is a spacer ring um, there's a, a link a case length in there and I think it's one and a half but if you're doing a shorter case like a nine millimeter or something you remove this ring and it just pulls off and there's a little clip in there, and then you see there's a groove that retains it. And for rifle calibers, longer cases, you keep that locked on. And it, it slides up and down here. The business end of this thing is right here, if I can get it to focus. Um, the actual cutting takes place here this is the actual blade that actually trims the case these other blades are the chamfer and deeper uh, blades and they are spring-loaded so you they uh, they push in so when you push down on this those go in down until those cutting blades start to contact the uh, the case you get one here I kind of show you goes in like this and then it presses up like that so that's where the actual cutting is going on these um, chamfer and deburring uh, blades are spring-loaded they will get kind of gummed up in here with shavings and what you what they say to do with that is take it to the edge of the bench or something and just press in like this and break them loose and make sure that they're free every once in a while and I had trimmed a couple cases with this so it's a little stiff so you gotta work that a little bit well what I had started doing see that's real stiff there there's, there's some shavings in there so you just do that a few times and work them out what I had started doing was just taking this and pushing it up against the side of my workbench where there's two by four 
and I found out the hard way this morning. I actually lost the pin. There's a retaining pin here that holds this in. And um, I had to replace that this morning. Uh, luckily, I found it. I'm shocked. If you saw the floor of my workbench, you would really uh, be shocked that I actually found this in my workshop. This is my old shed out here. Um, but the pin is held in place. I'm going to see if I can get it out. I don't know if I can get it out again or not. But it's it reminds me of a trigger and hammer pin of an AR-15, where it's a solid pin with a little groove in the middle. And that groove rides... Uh, in the groove on this to hold it in place but when you push it all the way in the grooves are lined up where the pin can come out and what I had done accidentally this morning is I just took this and pushed it up against the side of my workbench and the pin dropped out and I didn't notice it until I started playing with this and then the blades just came all the way out I looked it over I realized I'd lost the pin and I did some hunting on the ground and actually found it but and I had to replace it so since that might happen to y'all I just want to show you um, when now, um, when I'm aware of it, when I'm pushing against the side of the workbench to free those, I turn it like this so that the pin won't drop out from gravity. But I'm going to see if I can recreate it here. So when you push everything all the way in, I'm going to tap it a little bit because it's not coming out now. There it went. So it came out and these plates just flew all over the place. So hopefully I can find them all. Yes. Okay. Good. Everything's still here. <laughs> so, um, wow, that was even weird because the pin actually broke. So this is going to be a very short video. Um, when I did that, the pin actually broke in half. So, um, now I'm going to have to get a replacement from Lee, so I won't be trimming anything today, but I'll go ahead and show you what happened here. Um, this is the blades, and you can see they have a, a slot in them. And that middle blade, the one that looks like an arrowhead, you can see it has a narrow slot with a hole. And that's the one it really has to line up with. And this is that little pin. And you can see it actually broke when it came apart. But it's smaller in the middle. Got like a groove in the middle of it. it. So when you put all these blades in here like this. See the fat part will fit in this blade. But... <clears throat> It will only fit in the hole <clears throat> in this blade, and it won't slide down. So you've got to get it, the pin right in the middle so it'll slide up and down this groove. And uh, that little pin just snapped in half this morning. So um, that's that, <laughs> as far as that's concerned. I won't be doing any of that. So this is the, uh, the trim, I mean the uh, chamfer and deburring portion uh, of the Lee Quick Trim. So I'll be, uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up video, <clears throat> let you know how this goes once I contact Lee. <clears throat> Apparently the original quick trim looks like this without the, uh, without the hole in it. And it just trims the case and does not chamfer and deburr it. So you can kind of get a view of what this thing looks like. But, um, wow, what a piece of junk <laughs> but it does work um i guess i could probably use it like this and then just chamfer and deburr in a separate step but i'm not going to do that i'm going to uh i'll get a replacement pin from uh, lee and then try this video again can know how chintzy that is i might want to try to get several of them um i'm going to go ahead with some of the video and just kind of show you how this works so this is the die and um, when you, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I doubt it. You're not supposed to put a case in without it being in a die because it does kind of stick a little bit in the bottom. But when you put the case in, that little hole in there, the neck just sticks up above the hole so that when you're doing the trimming operation, it's just working on the neck. Um, the directions call for you to screw this in all the way down. And then you um, insert the 
quick trim in there and trim your brass while holding some pressure down on the handle which is you know pushing up on there so um i i did change one thing um if you watch any of my other videos um forgive my jumping you know that this is my press i use a, a bear reloading press and um I'm very happy with this. It's a nice, strong C-frame press, so it's easy for me to get my hands in there, but it's strong enough I can load anything with it. But the Lee Quick Trim did not work very well with this, and I was really trying to figure out what the problem was, and I think it's where it's inclined. So I noticed when I watched like YouTube videos, other people were not having the problems I was having with it binding up and stuff as I cranked it around. So... I mounted my RCPS Junior press, Rock Checker Junior that I have, and tried it with it, and it definitely does work better with it. So um, this is the way to go. Uh, if you have an inclined press, I think you'll have a lot of problems if you try using the Lee Quick Trim with it. But um, even though this thing is kind of broken, I'm still going to try to trim a couple cases and just kind of show you how it works. So, um, here's a uh, AR-15, well, 223 case. The maximum length on this is 1.750, no, 1.760. And the trim to <coughs> is 1.750. So, if you can see, this one is 1.768. So it is too long and it needs to be trimmed. So I'm going to lower my ram, screw in the die. Okay, and then insert case in the shell holder and run it up. And you notice you just the ram doesn't go all the way up and lock, so you have to kind of hold some pressure on there. The other thing that Lee warns is, is the top of the shell holder here. They said to get in the habit of just wiping your finger across it because instead of shavings build up on this, <clears throat> it can keep the shell from going all the way up in there and adjust the trim length. So, and Then you insert the quick trim, and I'll try this without the uh, other doodads on it. And... Uh, Usually it's spring-loaded, but of course it's not spring-loaded now because the blades are out, so it just sits all the way down. So I don't know if it's really going to work or not, but we'll try it. And then you're supposed to just turn this, and it cuts. And they say in the manual, I see people turn like three or four times. It says in the manual you have to turn it at least five times, usually, to get the cutting. So um, it did trim it. It just needs to be chamfered and deburred now, so let's see what kind of job it did. Um, so we are now at 1.750, 1.7505. So, uh, it does trim. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. We'll try another one. Now this one is 1.7725. So definitely too long. So let's try that one. So you just put it in. And turn it a few times I don't know what was that ten times maybe and you knock out the shavings and then this one's at 1.756 so um, you may have to turn it a few more times to get it down let's see if it'll go anymore One point seven five oh five. So, uh, but now that one, I had to turn it about twenty times to get it there, but it did get there. So, um, it's a pretty handy tool. It works pretty good. It's probably not the best option in the world. I know they make a version that you can hook to an electric drill if you wanted to do that. Um, I, I think the hand version's fine, but I don't do a large volume, uh, large, you know, high quantity 
uh, of reloading if I were doing you know thousands of rounds I'd probably want to go with the drill but uh, I'm working more in the hundreds of round range so uh, I can sit down and knock out about 50 or 100 cases without a whole lot of uh, problems so it works pretty good for me but I might do a follow-up video to this um, after I get that pin and replaced but uh, actually just now using it like that I, I kind of liked it without the blades in there because sometimes I get some resistance and binding and it seems to be from the blades the actual cutting part of it, it went real smooth right there and there I didn't feel any binding or anything at all so I wonder how much of that is the blades um, now I've just got to do the extra ch step of, uh, ch of chamfer and deburring it myself but I'm almost thinking, uh, that's why I went with the Deluxe Quick Trim, because I like the idea of it doing it all in one step, but it, it doesn't work um, as smoothly as I would like. I, I kind of liked it this way, so I might just do it like this for a while, and just uh, do the deburring myself and see if I like it better that way. But um, that's, a, I guess, a quick look at the Lee Quick Trim and uh, some of the problems you can have with it. So... Um, I'll just close this one out for now. Uh, God bless y'all.